Okay, Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so for today we are going to uh, move on to the next chapter, chapter 5. So chapter 5 is about uh, designing controller and uh, we are going to learn about uh, chapter uh, lecture 5A regarding the uh, compensator. So after completing this lecture, you guys will be able to understand the purposes of a compensator and design face light compensator and also design face lead compensator. So because we have two types of compensator to cover to be covered in this lecture. So today we are going to cover only uh, face lead compensator and for face lead, we are going to cover it on Wednesday. So before we go into uh, learning about what is compens compensator, how to uh, design compensator, let's review a bit about a uh, second order system, uh, specifically under dam system. Okay? So for an under dam system, you need to um, know by now few formulas. Okay, So first formula that you need to know is the percent overshoot or uh given by this formula okay so percent overshoot equals 100 times epsilon of negative damping ratio times pi divided by square root of one minus damping ratio squared so usually in designing a compensator you will be given a system a percent overshoot okay or the overshoot requirement for a system. So from the percent overshoot requirement, you need to find the damping ratio. Okay. So when you are given percent overshoot, you need to find the damping ratio of a system that you uh, that you want to uh, design. So from this formula, to find the uh, damping ratio, is basically this formula. Okay. And then there are an, a few things, a few more things that you need to uh, know by now. So firstly is um, when you have the damping ratio, then you can determine the angle made from uh, origin to a specific uh, poles. Okay, So the X here represent the poles. So the angle made is the line from the origin. And this line represent, uh, actually represent this omega n, okay? Or the uh, frequency, natural frequency, okay? So from this pole, when you get this line and the angle calculated from this formula, so you can find the pole's um, uh, value or coordinate, okay? So we get negative uh, damping ratio, omega n, equals the real part of the poles and the imaginary part is given by um, uh, omega n times square root of 1 minus uh, damping ratio squared. Okay, so from here you can find the settling time Ts and also the peak time Tp. Okay, so uh, these are uh, the things that you need to know in, before you can design uh, the compensators. So now let's uh, go back to our original uh, topic, okay, which is about designing compensator. So what is the problem that we want to uh, actually tackle okay, when designing a compensator? So a root locus allows us to choose a proper gain K to meet a system performance specification. So as I said in previous weeks about root locus, so root locus is a plot of poles when you change the value of K. And when the K is varied, then the different uh, the system will behave differently okay, depending on the poles and zeros. 
Okay, so the system performance now is limited by the shape of the root locus. Okay, so basically when you change the value of k, you will get um, different types of poles from a transfer function. Okay, and you will uh, you can sketch the root locus. So now the root locus is specific for a given system. So whenever you want to design uh, based on a specific transfer function, then it is limited by the shape of the root locus. So for example here, this is an example. Look at the blue uh, line here. So the blue line here represent the root locus of a given system. Okay, so given the root locus, the blue line, at a specific percent overshoot, so let's say at a specific percent overshoot, this line here, so at this cross uh, intersection point A, so the system performance is represented by this point A. Okay, so at point A, you will get a specific percent overshoot. And if you plot the time response, you will get the blue line here. So this blue line here, maybe it has a specific value of a percent overshoot. So maybe you want to reduce this percent overshoot, okay? Or maybe you want to shift this line, uh, this uh, time response to be the uh, to become the black uh, line here at uh, pulse B. So let's say our goal is to design the system to have a settling time at point B, but maybe we want the system to have similar percent overshoot, but we want it to reduce in terms of settling time. But now if at point B here, if we find the poles and plot the poles on the imaginary plane or S plane here, now the point B is no longer on the root locus. Okay, so uh, whatever you do, whatever you, uh, however you change the the k value for for the blue system here, you won't get the system to intersect at this point B. Okay, there's no way. Okay, because point B is always outside the root locus. Okay, so the the problem now is that. Uh, if you want to change the, the settling time but maintaining the percent overshoot, you will get point B. But point B is not on the root locus. So whatever you uh, change the gain value, you won't get uh, the settling time at the point B here. So that's why we need to use a compensator. So to improve the system from A to B, it can be done by replacing the system the existing system, which is the plan or process, by a new uh, transfer function that uh, has a root locus intersect at point B. But to change the system, to change the plan, is very expensive and uh, not practical. Okay, basically you change the overall system, uh, like a baru lah concept there. So to reduce the cost and to make it more practical we uh, achieve this uh, improvement by adding a compensator. Okay, so a compensator is something like an additional transfer function that has additional poles and zeros so that the overall system, uh, the overall system root locus intersects at point B. Okay, so let's say uh, we, uh, we have an original system that has controller G2 and plan G3 without compensator. So basically we add a compensator. Here uh, we focus on cascade compensator only. So we add an additional block. We call it compensator to improve the system uh, based on what we require. So let's look at the first uh, compensator. So there are two types of compensator. So here we look at uh, integral compensator, okay? an ideal integral compensator. So given a system with a desirable transient response with closed loop pulse at A. So let's say you want a system um, that behaves at uh, similar to point A here. So at point A, it will have its own overshoot, percent overshoot. So the total angle of all poles and zeros at point A it's always multiple of 180. So this is back, going back to uh, the angle as I said last week, okay, that you need to calculate later. 
So showing that point A is on the root locus. Okay, so to determine whether a point is on the root locus is by finding the angle made by the other uh, poles and zeros to the point that you uh, desire. Okay, so this is going back to uh, three weeks ago, like just three weeks ago. So if a point is on the root locus, the angle made must be a multiple of 180 degree. So let's say if we add a pole on the compensator. So just now the compensator is um, only a grain. Okay. So now we add a pole okay, over S. Okay. So uh, pole on origin. So uh, PC equals zero. Uh, pole compensator PC equals zero. So let's say we add S and we add another pole. Uh, origin represented by this uh, cross here, theta C. So now if we add this pole, then the angle contribution of this new pole will cause the total angle at point A to be no longer multiple of 180 degree. So point A is no longer on the root locus. So if you redraw or sketch the root locus, then you can see that the root locus won't intersect point A. So by adding an additional pole, then the system root locus now change in shape. And the original point, uh, which is point A, is uh, now outside the root locus. So whatever you do, whatever you change at the value of K, it won't uh, intersect, the root locus won't intersect the point A. So now the system will not uh, have the transient response as uh, what we desire. So let's say we add a zero, okay? Now we add a zero, uh, S plus A. So zero at negative A. And this zero uh, has a value, or the value A here, has a value very close to the pole added here, S. Okay, so let's say we add another zero. Let's say this uh, circle here. And this circle uh, is, uh, the value. the value is, uh, almost uh, similar to the pole uh, that we add. Okay, so the pole we add just now is uh, PC equals zero. So maybe we add another zero uh, value at uh, maybe ne uh, negative 0 0.01, for example. Uh, very uh, almost similar to the pole uh, equals zero. So when we uh, sketch the root locus, then the root locus now uh, can almost intersect point A. Okay, so basically the pole uh, S equals zero and the uh, zero, which is S equals minus A, uh, the effect cancel each other. Okay, so when the effect cancel each other, so the root locus, um, the point A will have um, angle one hundred eighty degree or almost one hundred eighty degree. Okay, where, because these two pole and uh, pole and zero, the effect or the angular effect to the point A here basically cancel each other. So the idea of adding integral compensator is we add additional uh, transfer function. So we add uh, this transfer function has a pole and a zero such a way that these two uh, cancelling each other. Okay the effect of pole and zeros cancel each other. So macam uh, kenapa tak letak je uh, uh, S plus zero. Uh, if you add S plus zero, basically you add just again K. Okay. So we don't want to add again K, only we want to add something else so that the root locus will change in shape. Okay. Or change slightly. Okay. So let's look at an example on what I just uh, repeat just now. So let's say you have a system with a gain K and a plan which has a trans function one over S plus one times S plus two times S plus 10. So let's say you are required to um, design a system, okay? So given a system above with a transient response requirement 
of uh, damping ratio equals 0 0.174. So show that the addition of an integral compensator, so PC equals 0, can reduce the steady state error but maintain the same transient response. Okay, so let's look at this example. Okay, so the calculation is kind of long. And uh, let's look at this calculation uh, one by one. So first, we are given the damping ratio. Okay, So from the formula that I showed earlier, so from the damping ratio, we need to calculate the angle, the angle of the line. Okay. Basically, we have uh, this line here. So we want to find this line. So we have the damping ratio. We want to find the angle, angle of this line. So this line will intersect with uh, the root locus at uh, required damping ratio. So firstly, we find the, uh, the angle of that line. So damping ratio equals 0 0.174 equals cos theta. So theta equals 79.98 degree. And then let uh, the pole at that point, at that line, equals a P equals negative sigma plus omega J. So omega equals sigma tangent theta. Okay. So this is uh, going back to the formula. So use this theta, we get 5.66 sigma. And then we, we want to find the gain, the gain at that specific pole on the root locus. So to find the gain, we need to use this uh, calculation. Okay? So basically this calculation was done using symbol lab. So kalau uh, kira manual, so if you want to calculate manually, uh, probably uh, almost impossible. Okay? Bukan, bukan, tak, uh, bukan tak boleh, boleh. Tapi uh, the purpose of putting this calculation is uh, to show you an example, but most of the time this calculation was done using MATLAB. Okay, so this is uh, the way to calculate it. So one plus kg uh, g of s. So we replace s with the pole that we want here, and expand the uh, the formula. So we end up with this uh, third line here, and then we compare the real part an imaginary part of this equation. So we get two equations here. And then you can, you can solve this using symbol lab or MATLAB, okay? So basically, uh, you have three equation and solve simultaneously. So from this uh, equations, you get sigma equals 0 0.694, omega equals 3.926, and again, at that pole, is equals 164.6. Okay, so if you sketch the root locus and you sketch the line uh, made by this uh, damping ratio, so this is the point that we want to find. Okay, this is the point P, this point here, the intersect point here. Okay. So at point P, uh, the pole here equals negative 0 0.694 plus 3.926J and the gain at this pole is equals 164.6. Okay. So, um, next slide. So, uh, from our system just now, this system, so uh, first, we want to achieve a system that uh, can reduce the steady state error. So what we need to do now is to find the steady state error of this system. Okay. So if you still remember topic on steady state error, so firstly, we need to determine the type of the system. So the type of this system is type 0, okay, because SN here, there's no uh, SN here, meaning that N equals 0, okay. So it's a type 0 system. So for a type 0 system, the only steady state error that you have 
is the KP. Okay. So find KP. So KP equals the limit of GS when S approaching zero. So substitute zero. So you get KP equals K over 20. So we have our K just now, which is 164.6. We, calculate, we calculated earlier, so we can get our KP. So KP is 8.23. And from this KP value, we can find the steady state error. So steady state error is 1 over 1 plus KP. So you get 0 0.108. So the question is, uh, we want to design a system to reduce the steady state error. So the steady state error is already 0 0.108. Maybe we want to reduce it to zero. Okay? Let's say we want to remove a steady state error. We don't want any steady state error. So we add a compensator. Okay? So the compensator has a pole at PC equals zero. And a compensator zero, ZC, has a, a value approximately equals to PC. So maybe we use a negative 0 0.1, okay? So we add a compensator here. So S plus 0 0.1 divided by S. Okay, so the formula for compensator is always S plus uh, ZC over S plus PC. Okay, so PC is zero and ZC is uh, 0 0.1, okay? So if you sketch the new root lockers from this uh, new system, then um, you can see that actually the root lockers uh, berganja a bit, okay? bergerak a bit or move a bit. Okay? So the new pole here intersected with this line is now changed to this value. And again also changed to a new value. Okay? So now the system here this system, we have S here, S power of 1, okay? So the system becomes type 1, okay? And for a type 1 system, we don't have KP. So KP is equals infinity. So when KP equals infinity, then steady state error is 0 for a type 1 system. Okay, so you need to go back to uh, steady state error uh, uh, lecture, okay? So... Uh, the question is, when we add this uh, compensator, is the transient response changes? Okay, so now uh, we know that the new comp uh, the new uh, root lockers with, uh, with additional of this compensator intersected with this line. So it has similar uh, damping ratio, which is 0 0.174. But the steady state error is now eliminated, becomes zero. So the purpose of adding compensator from this uh, example is we want to change the type of system. That's the first uh, uh, purpose. And the second purpose is we want to make sure that the new system has a similar um, transient response, which is the damping ratio. But we want to reduce the steady state error. In this case, uh, it eliminates the steady state error, becomes zero. Okay. So the uh, the uh, to change this or to improve the system is easy by adding a compensator zero and also a compensator pole. So if you uh, sketch the time response of uncompensated system and a system with uh, a compensator, you will see that here, the, damp uh, the percent overshoot and the damping ratio is uh, maintained, okay? Almost similar, or we call it the transient response, okay? Transient response, 
almost similar. But the difference is uh, the steady state value. Okay. So the uncompensated steady state value is about 0 0.9, while the compensated uh, steady state value is equals one. Okay. Equals one, which is uh, the uh, error has been eliminated. <coughs> okay, any question uh, before we move on to uh, next uh, topic? <coughs> okay, so um, uh, in your project part five, later you will need to design compensator, okay? But uh, in part five, uh, you are required only uh, to design compensator using MATLAB. You don't need to do manual calculation. Okay, uh, there's a link of video in the project part five where you need to do some uh, manual adjustment of the root locus. You will uh, later you will see the video and you will see how to do this in MATLAB. Okay, uh, it's uh, much as Ronald juga okay to design a uh, compensator using MATLAB because. Uh, it doesn't involve uh, programming. It involves uh, only uh, moving some points, okay? Gerak-gerakkan point dalam uh, MATLAB, okay? Uh, dia leceh sikit lah, tapi uh, tak perlukan programming. Okay, so let's look at uh, the lag compensator. Okay, just now is ideal integral compensator. So now we look at uh, lag compensator. Okay, so the purpose of a lag compensator is to reduce steady state error but maintain similar transient response. Okay, similar to uh, ideal integral compensator, but um, the name is also ideal, okay? meaning that we cannot uh, design an ideal integral compensator in real life. Um, actually, when we design this compensator, we design this uh, trans function. Uh, actually, we can represent this transfer function using electronic circuit, okay? Maybe using uh, capacitor ke, resistor, or uh, inductors, or maybe amplifier. And we add this uh, circuit into our system, okay? But uh, we exclude this uh, design, the electronics design in this uh, uh, course, okay? Because it involves a lot of things, okay? Dia dah macam budak EE. So kita hanya aja macam mana nak dapatkan a uh, trans function of the compensator. Okay so if you are interested more about how to design the compensator using electronic circuit a uh, boleh tengok a uh, YouTube okay. Uh, saya tak tak tahulah. Of course lah saya orang mechanical. <laughs> okay so a uh, a lag compensator to design a lag compensator you have to add a pole and zeros or ZC and PC such that uh, ZC is uh, always lower than PC or in terms of location in this uh, figure here ZC is located more negative than uh, PC okay so let's say uh, if you use uh, ZC 0.1 then your PC must be 0 0.01, for example. Okay, so a ZC must be more negative than a PC, okay? So a compensator, in this case, lag compensator, the transformation is given here. So we have K times S plus ZC divided by S plus PC. Okay, so uh, this is the root locus of uh, only the plant, okay? Only the plant without compensator. So when you add the compensator, then the root locus will shift a bit, will akan bergerak sedikit ke kanan, uh, ke kiri. Okay, so in this case, when you add uh, negative ZC and negative PC, the angle of ZC and PC cancel each other and maintains this point P. But the root locus, will change slightly, okay? The shape will change slightly. So, kalau dalam gambar ni tak nampak lah, dia bergerak. Tapi kalau dalam video in in your project, if you look at, at the video, then you will see that this 
uh, figure, this root locus is actually moving a bit, okay? Bertukar shape a bit. But uh, of course lah, tak nampak adalah gambar ni. So gambar ni static, okay? So how much can reduce the error? How much uh, by adding a compensator can reduce uh, the error? Okay, so uh, let's say this system plan here, when you add uh, S plus PC, then this system, uh, if you look at this, S here, it's a type 1, type 1 system. Okay, so S power of 1. So for a, a type 1 system, you only have a uh, static error KV. Okay. So KV equals a limit of S GS and substitute GS, you get uh, this limit here and simplify you get this uh, KV equals this, okay? And then the new KV for uh, add, when you add a compensator is equals KV originals times ZC over PC. Okay, so this is the first formula that you need to uh, know, okay, in this lecture. So KV new or any K new equals K original times ZC over PC. And then we can calculate the error, the steady state error. So error of the type 1 new system, when you add compensator, equals error of the original system times PC over ZC. Okay, so this is the second formula. And if you look at this formula, then the error of the new system is reduced by a factor of PC over ZC. Okay, so to design a system, let's say if you have error, for, for example, 10%, let's say you want to reduce it to 5%, so your PC over ZC must be 1 over 2, okay? The factor is half, okay? So you can design PC and you can find the value of PC and ZC by finding the error of the original system and then uh, compare it with what error requirement and then in this case you want uh, the error to reduce by half so here the PC over ZC the ratio must be equals half as well okay so let's look at uh, an example so let's say you have this uh, system similar to the previous example but now you want to design a lag compensator, okay? A lag compensator meaning that you have um, S plus ZC over S plus PC in this uh, box here. So you want to design a lag compensator to improve the steady state error by 10 times, okay? So let's say you have a steady state error all equals A. So steady state error new reduce by 10 times, okay? So A over 10, 10 kali turun. So the transient response specification is uh, damping ratio equals 0 0.174 and at dominant pole here. Okay, so in this question, in this example, you are given already the damping ratio and the dominant pole. So you don't need to uh, find the dominant pole using the calculation yang, uh, that I showed you just now. So firstly, uh, we find the um, we find the uh, steady state error of this uh, original system. So this is already found from previous example. Okay, already found here. It's similar transfer function. So similar calculation for finding steady state error. So you get a uh, steady state error equals 0 0.108 and the system type is type 0. So for a type 0 system, you only have KP. KP that gives a value for steady state error. So now you want the new error to reduce by 10 times. So as I showed earlier, uh, the E new equals the E old. This is the old E divided by 10, okay? 
So you want to reduce the steady state error by 10 times. So you get 0 0.0108 equals 1 over 1 plus kp nu. So this is formula for uh, type, type 0 system. Okay. So from here, you can find the new kp nu equals 91.59. And then we get uh, KP new and KP original. So we can calculate uh, ZC over PC equals 91.59 over 8.23. So equals 11.13. Uh, okay, so uh, earlier I showed you that uh, this formula. So this error, uh, error ni bukan uh, not steady state error. Okay? Ni error. Uh, lain banyak sangat error lupa dah so to find the ratio using kp new divided by kp original so the ratio is 11.13 11.13 sorry so now you can design the compensator so you can choose your pc value and zc value so first we choose pc we choose PC value. To design a light compensator, we choose a PC value first. So we choose a PC value, a very small one, approximate zero, okay? So in this case, we choose equals 0 0.01, PC equals 0 0.01. So if PC equals 0 0.01, then ZC equals 11.13 times 0 0.01. So you get 0 0.111. So you get uh, equals 0 0.1113. Okay. And then you can plot this PC and ZC on the uh, S plane and sketch a new roll locus. Or uh, in MATLAB, you can uh, sketch this uh, using MATLAB. So if you add this new uh, Z compensator and P compensator, you will get a new uh, root locus, but it still intersect at this uh, uh, line here at uh, damping ratio. But the poles and the gain has changed to a new value. Okay. But at this point, uh, the damping ratio is maintained, but the steady state error is reduced ten times. Okay. So this is a summary of the difference between uncompensated and a uh, system with lack compensator. So the uh, the value of K uh, reduce and KP increase. Okay? So this is a new uh, KP uh, which is found uh, by uh, using uh, MATLAB okay? without manual calculation. And the steady state error is reduced from 0 0.108 to 0 0.011, okay. it is 10 times, almost 10 times. And the dominant poles change and the other things are changed as well. Okay, so this is the idea. Okay, so when you uh, when you want to design a lag compensator, so to design a lag compensator, so lag compensator, the purpose is to reduce uh, steady state error. Okay, so if you are required to reduce a steady state error of a system, then you need to use lag compensator. So to design a lag compensator, you need to choose uh, ZC value less than PC value or ZC more negative than PC value. And then to, uh, to determine ZC and PC, you need to use this ratio. So meaning that you need to find the static error, K, of the original and new one and find the ratio and the ratio equals the ratio of zc over pc and then from there you can um, if a value of pc approximate zero and then you can get zc by using the ratio okay the ratio that uh, you calculated so in this example you cannot find k so to find K, you need to use uh, something else, okay? You need to use MATLAB. Ah. 
So here in this example, you are able to find PC and ZC. Okay, so that's it for lag compensator. So let's do a uh, tutorial. Okay? So tutorial. So uh, tutorial ada ada dua soalan untuk setiap compensator. So maybe we do uh, the first one. So given a unity feedback system operating at 10% overshoot. Okay, so in this question, it doesn't give you the um, the damping ratio and it doesn't give you the dominant pole. Okay, but um, uh, in your final exam, if come out, we will give you the dominant pole okay? because we want to skip the calculation of uh, damping ratio and so on because it, it it's not uh, practical to use a uh, calculator to calculate, okay? Usually we will give you the value of dominant pole. So in this case, uh, it doesn't give you the dominant pole. So, uh, can the key rest Okay, then Oh, come on. Okay, so uh, this is your uh, trans function, forward trans function of the system. So determine the non-zero static error constant of the system. So soalan A ni, we go back to uh, lecture on steady state error. Okay, so look at GS. So GS here, it's type type zero. Okay. So GS is type zero. So the only uh, static error constant that uh, exists for type zero is KP. Okay, so KP equals limit when S approaching zero. OGS. So equals one over two times three times seven. So this is equals uh, one over forty two. Tapi kat sini kita tak ada tak letak k, okay? So actually we need to uh, find the k first, okay? the gain k of the uh, system. So we have uh, k over 42. So what is k? So we need to find k. So to find k, you need to use the uh, calculation yang panjang lebar tu. So firstly, the percent overshoot given is uh, 10%. Okay, so we need to find the damping ratio. So damping ratio equals negative uh, ln 0 0.1, sorry, or ln uh, percent overshoot over square root of pi squared plus ln 0 0.1, uh, sorry, <laughs> percent overshoot. Okay, so we have our percent overshoot at 10% or 0 0.1, okay. So just substitute in this formula and you get damping ratio equals 0 0.5912. Okay, so saya dah kira awal tadi sebelum uh, kelas start. So saya tiru je lah, tak dah kira dua kali. Okay, so we get the damping ratio. So we need to find the angle of the line that intersect the root locus, okay, the garis to roots, the straight line. So theta equals uh, cosine minus one 
of damping ratio. So we get 53.76 degree. So if you uh, sketch uh, root lockers, Okay, ni tak payah sketch ke? Dalam exam tak payah sketch pun. So this is the line. This is the angle. 53.76. And the rule locus is probably something like this. Okay, maybe like this. Okay. So we want to find this dominant pole here. SAP. So to find the point P, you need to use the uh, formula yang uh, I showed just now. Okay, so at this point, so omega equals sigma a tangent theta equals 1.364 sigma, okay. And then we can use uh, the next formula, 1 plus kg equals 0. So firstly, we define P. So P equals sigma negative plus omega j. So in this formula, we substitute uh, gs with P, okay? So P is uh, from previous one. So we get uh, some some equation. And I compare the real and imaginary part. So the real part, you get negative sigma, sigma cube plus three sigma omega squared plus 12 sigma squared. So uh, don't worry, in, in final, if come up, we will give you the dominant pole because uh, jalan kira dia uh, panjang nak mati. Itu plus K. But uh, you can uh, try calculate it by yourself later when you do the tutorial or you can use symbol lab. Okay? And then the imaginary part, you get uh, 3 sigma squared omega minus omega cube minus 24 sigma omega okay so this is equation number three so solve uh, equation one two and three simultaneously so you will end up with um, omega equals 2.558 sigma equals 1.875 and k equals 41. Okay, so we get our k equals 41. So go back to finding the static error constant yang tak habis kira tadi. Okay, so kp equals k over 42. So 41 over 42. Uh, you get uh, 0. Point, uh, kira one over 42 0.9762 okay so this is static error constant so to find static error constant you need to find k first okay and then we get our static error constant then we can go to question b design a lag compensator so that the system has static error constant equals 4 so question B, the new KP equals 4. Okay, so the question gives you KP, new KP equals 4. So uh, ZC over PC, the ratio equals KP new over KP old. So new is 4. four. The old one is 0 0.9762. So calculate. So 
so we get uh, 4.098 okay so we get this ratio now we can design our compensator so to design a compensator I said just now we choose PC value first okay so choose PC such that it is very small almost equal zero so ideally we choose um, PC equals for some point 0 0.01 for example 0 0.01 and then we can find ZC 4.098 times 0 0.01 Okay, so you get uh, ZC 0 0.041. Okay, so you can validate. So for a lag compensator, uh, ZC uh, must be uh, less than PC or more negative, okay? So here, ZC is 0 0.041. If negative, it is more than uh, negative PC. Okay, so you correct. Okay, your ZC and PC is within the uh, range given okay so your compensator let's say uh, compensator gc of s will have a uh, k k new s plus zc over s plus pc okay so as i said just now you cannot find k because to find k you need to use uh, the calculation uh, yang panjang tadi ataupun uh, use MATLAB okay so this is your new uh, this is your lag compensator transformation I think you can find K by using uh, different method but uh, I'm not sure how okay but um, for lag compensator usually we will ask you to uh, select the value of PC and ZC based on uh, this ratio Okay, meaning that you need to find this ratio and then uh, find uh, determine the suitable PC and then calculate suitable ZC. For the gain, you can find it uh, normally, okay? Jalan kira dia panjang. Okay, so this is how you do for uh, tutorial 12 number one. Okay, so for tutorial two, I think we will look at it uh, in next lecture. Okay, any question before we end this lecture for today? <coughs> okay, so if you don't have any question, then uh, you can try uh, project part 5 because in part 5 there are two two parts okay you need to design lag compensator and also you need to design lead compensator so i hope you already know how to design lag compensator so try to do that part uh part uh, part five of project so basically you just adjust the root lockers based on the uh, youtube video okay so you, you watch the youtube video and it will explain to you how to adjust the uh, root lockers to get a suitable compensator Okay, so uh, if you don't have any question, then we will continue uh, our lecture, lecture 5A compensator uh, on this uh, Wednesday, inshallah. So thank you very much for your time. Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you, Doctor.